So we've seen the basics of the box shadow property. We've seen how to use them in your designs effectively. And now we're going to see three unconventional ways you can use them in your website today. Hacks, you might even say, that will just make you be able to write less markup and have really cool designs. So let's go check those out. So what we're going to be looking at in this video, the first one is being able to add multiple borders or something, which is really cool and can be handy depending on your design. Um, there's also this here where we have it like peeled corners instead of having it uh, just like a flat shadow down at the bottom, which I think looks pretty good. And the last thing is uh, if ever you're doing modals, you can see on this modal here I have the background is getting grayed out. And we can do that without actually having to use any markup. So let's go and check that out. We have nothing else. I just have my little box right here. Um, so let's see how we can create a fake border to start with. So here on my box, I'm going to add in a box shadow. And let's make only 1D in shadow. And let's make this a little bigger just to make it easier to see what we're doing. So box shadow. So to create a fake border, we just need a whole bunch of zeros in there and then a spread. And you can see right away that it's working. Uh, so that's pretty handy. Uh, you might have remembered from really early on, if I just did like 20 pixels, 20 pixels, something like that with an offset, you're going to get the same type of thing, right? We're getting the shadow. So we saw that in the very first video uh, I was doing. So it's coming with the black shadow like that. So if I come in and do, so instead of doing it like that, I want to keep that same one. So I have to do the zero for my blur because if I ignore that number, nothing's really going to work. Um, and then I'm going to do 20 pixels and then I can put the color or we can just leave it as black. Uh, like that if we want to. Let's go with red for now, just so we have a color on there. So uh, right away, it's creating a fake border, and that's really, really handy. And if I want to create more fake borders, as we've seen, we can add multiple uh, shadows if we want, just by commas separating them. So I can come in, and now let's do 40 pixels, and we'll go with pink. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to come here and actually push return, um, just to make it a bit easier so we're not side-scrolling a little bit. So I have my pink. Uh, and let's come in and let's add another one here, 0, 0, 0, 60 pixels, and let's go with a green or something like that just to have multiple on there. Now one thing you'll notice is each one is 20 pixels thick because this first one is 20 pixels. Um, this one is underneath that, so I actually need it to be 40 pixels because it's starting at the same place as the last one. So if you do want to have multiple shadows like this, uh, you do have to play around with it a little bit just to get it to work properly. Another thing that's really important to consider when you're doing this is if you do have some extra content, um, it's possible that that content gets covered by your shadows. Let's just make this last green one really big so we can see here. Um, that it's, I'm exaggerating here just because we had a big space in the content. You can see that it's covering up the content that I had and that can be a problem. And the reason this happens is because with shadows, they're not part of the box model. They're not getting added into the total size of my document. They don't go with the flow of the document, which is really handy. That's really good because if not, it, we would just never use the box shadow. Um, but it just means to be careful with that. One solution so you don't have to worry about it as much, is just to make them all inset shadows. Inset and inset. Uh, so if I do that, it works. Now, if you do that, the only thing is you'd probably want to increase your padding a little bit um, just to make sure that you can, you know, you still have enough space on the inside. But at least when you do that, you know that it won't cover the things, uh, you know, it won't cover up other things uh, that are on the outer contents. So it just by makes it a little easier just to use a bit of padding and it will fix any issues on the inside. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a nice one to be able to do just to add multiple borders if ever you need it. Um, and another cool thing you can do with this, it's exactly the same idea. I'm going to put them back on the outside. Um, but what we can do is if I go with uh, negative spreads on this, so say I did negative 20, negative 40, and negative 60. So they're all hiding underneath. But now I come onto this one here, which is the, or not that one, sorry. I come onto these, which are my offsets. Um, I could do something like 40 pixels, 60 pixels. Uh, actually, that should be, say, 80 and 120 pixels. Uh, and we can sort of get this cool type of effect going on. Uh, and you could add a whole bunch more here and just have them sticking out the sides, the top, or doing different things like that. So that is another option to get like this sort of interesting stepped effect. Um, so what it's pretty much doing is it's negative 20 pixels, 
So it's going here by 20, but it also means it's coming in and in by 20 pixels. And then I'm moving it down 40, so it sticks out by 20 because it's 40 minus 20. And then here, the same idea, it's moving 40 in, 40 up. So then I'm pulling it all the way down. So it's actually sticking out 40. So I only see 20. And then I do the same thing with the green one there. Uh, so you're pretty much doubling the values each time, but that could be a fun little uh, effect, same type of idea. Again, if this one was really big, it would cover the content after. So just be aware of that uh, and be careful with that. Moving on to the modal background fill, this is the really easy and simple one to be able to do. This is really, really, really basic. I am using a little bit of JavaScript to do this. If you're curious and you wanna see that JavaScript or to see how I've done any of this, I forgot to mention it earlier, but this is all done with CodePen. So the link to this is in the description below. You can go check it out. It will be the finished version of uh, whatever I finish working on right here. Uh, that you can take a look at and play around with a little bit because I'm not going to get into the functionality of all that. I just want to be looking at the box shadows for now. Um, so here on my modal that's popping opened, um, that modal is just created right here. I just have a div class of modal. And if I look down, I was hiding all the styles for that. Um, but what I could do is on my modal have a box shadow. Now, if I just did say... Uh, I don't know, zero, zero, 20 pixels, zero type of thing. Already my modal is like standing out over everything else. Uh, if you remember back from the last video where I looked at how to make them look good, uh, you wouldn't want necessarily one that's this dark, but at least it gives you the sense that it's sitting on top of the content. But a lot of sites like to darken out the content there. Adding in extra markup just to darken it sort of sucks, in my opinion. I like just having my modal like that. So one thing you can do is I'm actually going to put my blur to zero. Now, if you remember uh, when I was doing my V's shadows, I mentioned that they're, the page and other content ignores the shadow. It pretends it's not there. It's just a visual element, but it's not actually like content on the page. So you can sort of take advantage of that by coming on the spread and just making it ridiculously big. Um, so now <laughs> it's covering everything. My, my spread's actually way bigger than what I'm seeing. 100 vertical width means starting here, it's going a full screen length in every direction. So it's insanely big. Uh, you could get away with a much smaller number. But by making it that big, I'm not getting any scrolling because of it, because it's being ignored by everything else. It's not actually, it's not a content element, so it's not causing any issues. And if I wanted to tone that down, I just have to come with an RGBA. Don't know what TGBA is of zero, 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 and then, I don't know, 0.5. And now we have a transparent black background on my modal when it's open. So it sort of will make sure the, the focus is on what's in here and then it goes away. You can make that fade off and do all those other things as well. Um, but yeah, that's a nice one that I, I, I think is really useful. And it's nice that it means you don't have to add in some decorative markup and things that you wouldn't actually be using. So I think that is a nice handy one. Um, now onto the peeled corners. Uh, for the peeled corners, I'm going to delete this. And for the code, the final version of CodePen that I end up sharing in the link below, I'll make sure to turn them back on, uh, and I'll probably pretty them up a little bit at the same time. Uh, but let's just get rid of that because it's going to hide what I'm doing. And let's look at how I can do these peeled corners. Uh, now for this, we do need to bring in pseudo elements. This is less of a box shadow hack itself, and it's more of just a cool way that we can use box shadows um, and without extra markup once again. So I'm going to be starting out by putting these pseudo elements on top of my box so we can actually see what's going on. And when I'm done, I'll move them over to the back. Uh, we're going to need both a before and a box after for this one, uh, just to be able to do everything we need. So. If you know about suit elements, you know you always need the content property. A position absolute will help. Um, and I already had my position relative here because I want to make sure that this position absolute is in relation to the position of my box and not my body. If you're not comfortable with um, positioning, I do have some videos on that. And I do also have videos that cover um, the suit elements in quite a bit of detail as well. Um, Links to those will be down in the description below if you're curious. Um, so top, uh, I can't see them right now. Actually, let's just leave it like that. And now let's come on to style these uh, separately. So box before, 
I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to give it a background of light blue so we can see it. And um, let's come up here. I want both of them to share the same top. So uh, if I do, let's just do a top zero, bottom zero to start with, just so we can see what we're working with. Uh, left zero, right zero. So it's covering up uh, my whole my whole thing, which I don't want. I only need something that's going to be down close to the bottom. So I'm going to switch my top over to 90%. So it means it's going to push down 90% of the way from the top. So the top of this is 90% of its total height away from the top, which is a perfect. So it's just this little bar here. And that's sort of what I'm after, actually. The other thing I think I'm going to do on this uh, is I'm going to move it a little bit off of the sides and a little bit off of the bottom. So let's, tr I'm going to start with point, I don't know, um, I'm going to start with about five pixels, but I might have to play around with this number a little bit. On the left, I'm going to go with that same five pixel number. And on the right, I'm going to go with it quite a bit bigger. Let's just do like 40 pixels, 45 pixels. Um, basically, I don't want it too close to this side because I want this to only be doing the shadow here. And then my after, let's copy and paste that to make my after pseudo element. Uh, on this, we'll make it pink. So it's a different color. And I'm just going to switch these around. So this one will become 45 and this one will become 5. Um, and now let's add a shadow to those. So I'll come back. The shadow will be the same on both of them. So we're going to go back to here where I have my selector for both my before and my after. And let's add in a box shadow. Uh, let's go with zero, zero, I don't know, 15 pixels. We don't need a spread. So we'll just put the color and we'll make it a black. Uh, I'm going to start with 0.5 and we'll sort of tweak it from there. So you can see both of these have a shadow on them now. Uh, but obviously it's not doing what we want it to do uh, at all. So where the real magic of this comes in is you can do a transform, rotate. Now the rotation in this case is going to be pretty small. I'm going to start with uh, 4 degrees and we'll tweak it from there. And I actually want that one to be a negative 4 because I want this side to be closer and my spacing on everything is off. Actually, let's go with 3. 4 is too much. And I'll have to move them up a little bit too. Uh, so this one we we'll get the same thing, but the transform will be three degrees. So you can see that they're uh, how they're working like that. So what this is going to do is create the peeled effect on this side. This other one is going to create the peeled effect on that side. Now the problem is you really need to make sure these are hiding 100% completely behind uh, the white thing. So my bottom here is going to have to be um, a much bigger number. Um, there we go. So now that they're hiding completely behind that, it's already going to be working. Now it looks weird because we have the big X that is on top of that like that. So what I'm also going to do on here is just give them a Z index of negative one to push them into the back. So now I can't see them. The only thing I see is their shadows. Uh, so that's exactly what I want. I only want to see their shadows, but I can't see enough of their shadows. I can barely, barely see that there's a shadow there. It's giving me sort of the effect that I want. Um, but I want to make that a little bit more emphasized. So to do that, um, you could try playing around with a lot of things, but the easiest thing to do, we have horizontal offset and vertical offset. I'm just going to add a little bit to my vertical offset here to pull it down. And right away, look at that. It already looks pretty good. Um, I think it's a little bit dark, so you can play around with the numbers a little bit to lighten it up, and you start getting them. So playing with the vertical offset, your blur, you can make your blur a bit bigger, you can make your blur a little bit smaller, and play around with the numbers a little bit. Um, this is one where you're probably going to be using magic numbers a bit, which is numbers that work only in these specific use cases, and it's sort of perfect for your design, uh, but maybe are you're just, especially on the positioning of everything, to get them where you want. Um, you could also come in on the box itself and add a really subtle shadow, back shadow, uh, was zero, five pixels. So I want to move it down a little bit. You can see it there. Um, the black is the right color. So let's just give it a blur of, well, I need it to be a lighter black anyway, but, uh, box shadow, I'm going to give it a blur of a pretty big blur actually. And RGBA, uh, zero, zero, zero. Point, I'm going to start with 0.5 so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to give it a negative 15 or so spread because I don't want it to be on those ones. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. 
uh, I should just make it bigger and then I use my vertical offset just to pull it down. So we can start seeing it just showing up a little, little, little bit here, but I'd want it to be a really subtle, subtle, subtle shadow. Um, do you need that? No. I'm just saying if you do want a little bit more on that, you'd want to come in with that where you're using a negative spread so you're not getting the shadow all around like that. A pretty big blur and then an offset just to get it sticking out just a little bit along the bottom. Just be aware it will make these slightly darker uh, when you do that as well. Maybe I could even make that a little lighter. Um, but there you go, a nice cool um, little effect we can get like that for some peeled corners. Uh, one thing that's really important with this actually that I forgot to mention, when you're doing your vertical offset here, make sure you don't make it too big because when you start making that number too big, you might start getting something looking really weird and strange. Uh, so just it is a little bit finicky. You got to sort of just find the right number um, and play around with it a little bit. The bigger it is, the more peeled off the look. But once you go too far, it just starts looking really strange. That's it for this one. But before you go, uh, if you enjoyed this video and you like playing around with the box shadows and you liked seeing what I was doing with them here, I strongly suggest checking out my video on using position absolute in the wild. If you haven't already seen it, of course. Um, in that one, I take a look at how we can use box shadows to create a nice little sliced type of look where it looks like the you know one box is going into another box type of thing. It's interesting if you haven't seen it and you like this video, I think it'd be your cup of tea. Uh, so you can check that one out too. And that wraps up my series on the box shadow property. I hope you like this series. If you have any other hacks or just unconventional ways of using box shadows, please leave a comment down below and let us know about it. Of course, if you're reading this and you want to see if anybody else has any suggestions, go and check out those comments down below. I just want to give a big shout out to my patrons for helping support this channel and making videos like this possible. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.